So I hit level 20 and I'm setting up a magic item shop. I wanted to follow up on yesterday's D&D vlog where we were talking about the acquisition of magic items. And I think I can say for the most part, I mean, we're all doing this D&D thing and there's a shared mythology, but all DMs do things a little bit different. And of course, the player personalities of the party or the playing group or your local meta, it's going to be a little different. But I think for most of us, what we explored in that vlog was you find most of your magic loot or it's part of a quest reward. But for the most part, that's one of the incentives to save the realm and explore the dungeons and find out what's on that lost island. The promise, the possibility of magical items. But what about buying magic items? And I touched on that um, a little bit. How do we view magic items? That's that's the other part. It's it's interesting going from D&D basic and advanced Dungeons and Dragons where magic is a potent force. It, it exists and certainly there's magic users and wizards running around. Magic items I wouldn't say are rare, but they are powerful and they are guarded. It's a different shift. Magic and magic items exist alongside regular, normal items. But as we've evolved, as we've shifted in D&D, my feeling and my experience, and agree or disagree in the comments, magic and magic items have become a tech level of D&D. Science doesn't really exist because you don't need it because you've got divine magic and you've got arcane magic. Everybody, you know, D&D modern, everybody's geared up with magic gear everywhere. It's, it's basically tablets and smartphones. But for D&D, everybody's got magic gear. So within that framework, would it be out of place in a, a larger city? You know, we're talking something like um, Neverwinter, Hillsfar, you know, if we're doing classic Forgotten Realms, where there are magic item shops. Now, a magic item shop, I don't know if I see that where you walk in and there's like you know, 20 plus one long swords on the wall and a few plus two long swords and magic gear all about. I, I won't say to that level, but I could see an adventuring store or an, uh, an alchemist store having a small selection of magic items or trading in magic gear or rarities. Would it be out of place? And this leads to the question, right? Level 20 shopkeeper, you retire, here you go, you set things up. Um, I do have magic item shops in some of my larger games where you could walk into a city if you have the gold and purchase purchase that plus two longsword or purchase that ring of protection. I think a recent purchase was um, a ring of the ram. And from a D&D point of view, from a role-playing point of view, um, I have the shops where they've got random magic items, a small amount of random magic items that I, I kind of generate very quickly. And then they've got like kind of that standard list based on what's in the area and kind of the challenge rating for the players. And we've got a couple of items outside of their reach just for kind of narrative type effect, give them something to save their gold for. But when they walk in to buy one of these magic items, you kind of have two options. And I say two options because people play D&D in different ways. Some people talk in the third person. Some people just talk regularly. Some people do the voice. A lot of different ways to play your character. So I give two options. First of all, you walk into that store, you're going to be paying a premium price. You didn't loot this off of some monster. You didn't steal it from some noble. You didn't go on a quest and get a reward. This is pure commerce. And, and this is the tech. You got to pay the premium price. There's no discount magic items, unless you're going to go to the Thieves Guild or, or something like that. So first is you're going to be paying that price. You're going to be paying full book value, maybe a little bit more. Now, is that worth it? Well, that you've got to figure out. How badly do you want it? How is it going to fit into your character? What tactica is it going to give you? Now we're going to negotiate. In terms of negotiating, depending on the skill checks, depending on the addition, you have this choice. You can roll it out. You can try to persuade. You can try to intimidate. You could try to appraise. You could try to negotiate. If you do that, you get your roll. Now, whether you get advantage or disadvantage or a bonus, we can work that out. But ultimately, I've got a DC. 
I will modify that DC based on the party reputation, right? Looking at past adventures, looking who they've helped out. Roll that D20. Let's see. If you get that roll, you'll get it for a little bit less. Depending on how much you fail, it might be a little bit more. Depending if you fail and it's about in the middle, nothing might happen. Or we can go old school. Now, if we go old school, I jump into shopkeeper level 20 mode. I will come around from the DM screen, sit down, and let's talk for a little bit, right? And I will try to negotiate the best price that I can. Now, when I do that, I'm not like um, uh, the DM who's like a jerk. I, I do sit there and view myself as that shopkeeper, right? I try to appraise and look at the party. How much do I think I can get out of them? What's their reputation? Would it be better to let the item go for slightly above list price? Give them a good deal. Because then, of course, I'm going to post up um, posters all along the, the marketplace. You know, so-and-so adventurer uses my brand, plus one magic sword, and, and get that free publicity. I, I've done that, right? How are we going to work that out? Is the item they're interested in really one that I want to get rid of because I've got five more under the counter? Well, let's figure it out. So we would talk back and forth and, and we would negotiate till we reach that level. So I always give two options in purchasing a magic item. But I do believe in D&D current magic, magic items, it's kind of the tech level. I walk into the store to buy a new smartphone, buy a new tablet, do all that, buy some sort of digital watch. Why not magic items? It's kind of where D&D is now. But I do acknowledge going back real old school, AD&D, um, very rare. There's a couple of adventures where uh, not so much a marketplace, but a seller or kind of a merchant's league. You know, if you think back to the classic Keep on the Borderlands, there's going to be various items for sale, swords and armor and things like that. Maybe one or two magic items, but very low level type stuff. For the most part, I think there was a ring of protection you could buy and it was a crazy amount of gold. But for the most part, I would say in older D&D, magic items are hoarded, they're held onto, they're used. You're not necessarily giving those up, even in the larger cities, on the direct market. Your thoughts on that? Your thoughts on that? You hit level 20, you open up a magic shop, you're going to make a lot of gold? Or is it something that's really kind of out of place in D&D?